Hi, welcome back to my channel. I'm Julie, keeper of my home. Today we're going to make bread, oatmeal brown bread, and we're going to make it in my Bosch mix mixer. It's a tongue twister. Let me show this to you. This is my Bosch mixer, and I love this. Yes, I do have a KitchenAid, but it does not compare to this. It's pretty. This is not so pretty, but I much prefer my Bosch, especially for making bread because it holds so much inside. I can make four loaves of bread in this. I cannot do that in my KitchenAid. So let's get started. Okay, hopefully this is a good angle for you. I might shift you around a little bit. Okay, this is the cover. Both pieces come off separately. This would be like a splash guard and uh, I don't use it in the very beginning when I'm first starting my bread. I usually add it when I do my flour. First thing we are going to add in this recipe is one cup of oats. I use old-fashioned oats. You can use quick oats. don't know that I would use steel cut oats. I'm just going to put those in there. I spilled a few on the counter. Okay, I'm gonna add those, and then I'm going to add one half cup of butter. I'm gonna chop that into cubes. My water is ready in the microwave. I stuck it in there to warm it up. I'd heated it on the stove, and now it's ready. Okay, so I put a half a cup of butter cubed. I typically use salted butter, which I'm out of, so I did put in unsalted butter. And I don't think it's going to matter because I am adding salt to this recipe anyway. So next thing I want to add is one third cup of molasses. This pour it in here and I know I've said this time and time again on my channel but these cups, measuring cups, I love. I love these because they're, they're little push cups and they're great for measuring and adding ingredients. They just do it so much cleaner. Okay. I usually give this, usually give this a spin. Then, you wanna add two and one thirds cup of boiling water. And again, I give this a stir. going to put the cover on this just to keep the heat in enough to really melt that butter. We're going to let this sit. Let the butter melt. Let the molasses melt in there with that. Everything kind of come together. I'm going to give it a good mix once it is. I first learned how to make bread when I was probably 18 years old. I My mom never made homemade bread, not from scratch. She made homemade bread by buying the frozen bread dough in the grocery store and bringing it home. She just didn't feel she had time to make homemade bread. She was raising six kids on a farm and life was very busy. And you kind of have to say no to some things. And that was one of them. So my mother-in-law actually taught me how to make homemade bread. And I'm so glad she did. Now. I started out really good and then for a few years I kind of you know walked away from it and then as our kids were starting to get a little bit older and by that I mean probably seven eight years old they weren't toddlers anymore I started getting back into it I make bread every week we eat homemade bread we never buy store-bought bread unless there's a really good reason <laughs> If you've never made homemade bread before, don't let it intimidate you. I would definitely start making it by hand. And why I say that is that's how I started out. And what I learned is the feel and the texture of the bread. I got the feel of it. I got to really see how it came together, what it felt like, what it was supposed to look like. And that was a better experience making it by hand than putting it in a machine. And of course, 
she always made it by hand. That's how I learned that way. She didn't have a, a KitchenAid that she used for bread at the time. Now, I have used my KitchenAid, and like I said, it just doesn't do enough. I like to do a lot of loaves at once, and my Bosch does a lot. It's a workhorse. I love it. Best thing about it is the motor is a lot bigger. It's an 800, um, 800 watt motor versus 300 and something for your KitchenAid, and I think that depends on the model too. But this one, the motor is at the bottom, which I love. It's, you know, like I said, it's a workhorse. Holds a lot more bread. And best, best thing, it was way less expensive. So it was a win in my book. The oatmeal mix has been sitting for a little while, so let's check the temperature and see if it's ready. We're about 115, so it's perfect. It's right where I want to be. I don't want to be less than 110, so you can go all the way down to 110 if you like. You just don't want to be less than that. Okay, so I'm going to take that one off and I'm going to add my flour. I just use regular all-purpose flour. I don't use, I have never used anything else. So I can't uh, speak for any other kind of flour in this recipe as to whether or not it would work. We're going to add, I'm going to add all six cups. Four, five, and six. Now this is some vital gluten. You don't have to add this, but I find it gives my bread really good rise. I just add a couple teaspoons with every recipe I make. We're gonna add a couple of teaspoons of salt. Okay, now I'm gonna show you, I'm adding the salt to one side and I'm gonna keep it on that one side. Because salt and yeast do not get along together. So I always put salt on one side and I put my yeast on the other side. And for yeast, you want five teaspoons. That's two, three, four, and five. So keep your yeast and your salt away from each other. You don't want them directly on top of each other. I'm going to put this guard on here and we're going to give it a mix. Once my dough starts to form a ball and pull away from the sides, I'm going to set a timer for eight minutes and I'm just going to let this mixer go for the full eight minutes. When my timer goes off, then I'm going to stop it and I'm gonna check my bread to see if it's the texture that I want. Sometimes, depending on the humidity where you live, you may have to add more flour to your bread dough. I don't think we're gonna have that problem here because I do have the wood cook stove going, so it's pretty dry here. So we'll just run this with the six cups and I'll show you what it looks like when it's done. <laughs> Okay, our eight minutes are over. So let's take this off and take our dough out. This is perfect. The dough is perfect. It's cleaned the bowl, and that's what you want. Just, it's beautiful bread dough. I love this mixer. It's just made making bread so much easier for me. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna put this beautiful lump of dough into, you see, a greased bowl, just like that. And we're gonna let it sit covered. I'm gonna let mine sit on the cook stove in the warming oven, and we're gonna wait for it to double in size. If 
you don't have a cook stove, which I'm gonna guess most don't, you can leave the bowl of dough in your oven with just your light on. I'm gonna turn your light on, put the bowl in there, and just leave it. Close the door and you don't have to worry about it. It will rise, it's just enough to let it rise. You can also, if you don't wanna do that, or maybe your oven is being used up by something else, you can take a heating pad. If you have a heating pad, put that on low, set it on your counter and put your bowl on top of it. I've done that many times throughout the year when we don't have our cook stove going or my oven is in use. It works perfectly. Our bread has finished rising. Let's set it here. I'm gonna bring you in and show you. Look at this. Doesn't this look good? Now you saw when we put it in what it looked like. So you can see it's risen quite a bit. So what we want to do, and this is everyone's favorite part, is punch it down. Pull it out and put it onto a board. like to do is I like to weigh my bread because I want to be exact. One of these loaves is not for us. It is for someone else. So I want to make sure I didn't get that on the right setting. I want to make sure that it's even so that everyone gets the right amount. Okay. So I'm going to split this. And I'm going to weigh each piece until I get the right amount. Okay. That's even. So now what I'm going to do is form my loaf. Tuck in the ends. And put it in a pan. Now we're going to do the same thing we did with the um, bowls, the bowl of dough. I'm going to take both of these, I'm going to put them in the warming oven, and I'm going to cover them with a towel and let them rise until the dough comes about half an inch to an inch above the side of the pan. As you can see, I put the bread in the oven. I set the oven for 375. The bread's gonna stay in there for 30 minutes, exactly. I know all oven temperatures vary, so probably wanna keep an eye on yours so it doesn't brown too much, but you also wanna make sure it's done enough as well. So we will wait for this to finish in the oven. When the timer goes off, I'll bring you back and show you the results. The bread is out of the oven. So what you want to do is immediately remove it from the pan because you don't want it to sweat and cause moisture. So I'm just going to take those out and put them on a rack to cool. I'm going to use a stick of butter to just butter the outside of my bread. This makes it so that it doesn't form a really hard crust. It's just nice and soft and it has that buttery flavor on the top. You can easily skip this step. It's not necessary but it's how I learned, so it's how I continue to make my bread today. Well, the bread is done and I did get it all buttered. You never wanna slice into hot bread. As tempting as it is, you never wanna do it because it's still forming and um, working its magic. So if you cut into it, you kinda of let all of that steam out and it's no longer able to do what it needs to do to make your bread nice and fluffy. So be sure and let it alone if you can. I know sometimes I've just cut into it thinking, 
I don't care. It's my bread. I'll just slice into it. But one of these loaves is going to uh, someone else that um, ordered the bread. So I'll package that up as soon as it's cooled. And the other will be our bread for the week. Thank you for joining me today. I hope I inspired you to make some bread or at least gave you a new recipe that you've never tried if you already know how to make bread. <laughs> I create two new videos every week on simple living, homestead grown, and all things home. And until next time.